Hi guys, welcome back to Recipe Tryouts with me. My name is Amy, and today we are working on Hungarian goulash. Now this is a rather simple recipe. It's just got a few ingredients in it, and it's very flavorful because it's got some paprika, some marjoram, it's got onions, and a little bit of salt, and as well as a good round steak and some potatoes. So the first, so this book is actually, this recipe is actually out of our farmer, Franny Farmer Cookbook. Um, and it is on page 165, Hungarian goulash. They have more than one type of goulash in here, but this is the one we're trying today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start our casserole dish slash Dutch oven. We're going to light the, lit, the stove, set it to about medium heat, that way we don't burn the bottom of the pan. We're adding three tablespoons of butter. Two and three. So, we're going to get the butter a good melt. And while that's melting, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. The butter's got to melt first. <laughs> so while the butter's melting, um, we're going to just watch it, make sure it doesn't brown, make sure it melts real well. Now, it calls for a full onion. So I've already cut up my onion. I like to prepare everything before I start cooking, just so that I'm not wasting any time or anything is getting burnt or anything. So I've got my onions cut up and my potatoes. Now for the potatoes I used about five small russet potatoes, russet potatoes, russet potatoes, you know the brown ones and um, just cut them up into cubes. Whoops, there you go Leo. Leo got a piece of potato. So we will also be using beef broth in this recipe as part of the um, soupy stewy roux kind of stuff. A little bit of flour on the meat and such. So the butter's melting nicely. Um, thank you all who tuned, who looked, watched the the first video. I'm really excited to be doing this for everybody, and it looks it's feels like something that I know would be good. I could excel at, and that also would help people. I suppose. Okay guys, so the butter is melted, so let's go ahead and add in our onions. So we're just going to add in the onion right into that butter. Okay. So let's give that a good stir, make sure the onions are coated nice and evenly with that butter. And then we're just we're gonna let them cook while we cut up our meat. And that seems about right. Now since this is wooden spoon, I prefer to work with wooden um, utensils rather than plastic or metal because they don't get hot like plastic or metal does because wood's not a very good heat conductor or electricity conductor. So I'm just gonna lay that there and come over to my meat and chop it. Okay, everybody, what we have here is our brown steak for chopping for this goulash. Now, we need to cut it in about one inch, one and a half inch pieces. So we're just gonna slice it on up. Now, this recipe I really like. Um, I wanted to try it out because it seems like a simple one pot recipe. You don't have to cook multiple pots of uh, ingredients or meat or anything. And yeah, get some of this fat off. Stick that over here. Let's go ahead and turn it this way so we can get a good cut on it. Cut it here. So, it's a good round steak, 
it's pretty it's already kind of tender to the touch not a whole lot of fat on it so it shouldn't um, get too oily in the pan or anything so we're just going to cut this into cubes Cubes-ish. <clears throat> as long as it's in a square-ish shape, you're good. If it looks like it's going to be too big, you can always cut it down like I'm going to do with these pieces right here. I'm just going to cut these in half again just to make sure they'll all cook pretty evenly. Probably should have brought a bowl over. <sighs> My prior planning sucks. Oops. So, thank you, Handy Helper. Hands <laughs> Helper. <clears throat> so, thank you for stirring that as well. Every once in a while, you might want to go over to the pot and check on your onions just to make sure they're not burning or anything like that so how are they looking Oops. are they soft they're getting there they're getting there okay the onions you're gonna cook till they're soft so it takes a little bit longer to get them actually soft than it does just clear so that's why I'm not rushing this slicing of the meat. <clears throat> Just go ahead and cut this here. Now, as y'all know, I have a germ thing, so I use gloves. You don't have to if you don't want to, obviously. But I do just because it helps keep your hands a little cleaner to work with stuff. You're going to have to wash your hands 50 times. To get meat juice and any <clears throat> other juices or smells or anything. So, after we've got our meat cut up, we're going to go back to our onions and just double check and make sure that they're good. And once they're soft, we're going to add our paprika. Okay, and now you have your meat all cut up. Okay guys, so we're back over here with our onions and they are perfectly soft. So now we are going to come to our cookbook here and it says we need two tablespoons of paprika. Now, these one, these spices come with this divot here so it's easier to get in and get out unless you're using a tablespoon. Who knows, right? So we have to pour, which is awesome. So we're just going to pour some of that. Okay, got one. I find it easier to pour over the dish that you're making that's going that the spice is going to be going into because that way it's, um, if there's any that spills, or any extra, it will fall in the pan or pot or whatever you're baking or cooking or anything. So we're going to stir this into the onion. 
let it cook for a little bit. Let the onion kind of really soak up that flavor. Okay, so next we have we have to roll the meat into flour. So that's one of the things that we've got to do here. So what I like to do when meat needs to be put in flour is get a gallon bag, get the flour in there, get the meat in there, and um, shake it up. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, pause it. 